Okay, we're about to learn how to solve second order linear homogeneous differential equations. But before we do, we need to introduce a very important topic called linear independence or linear dependence of functions. And the way it works is let's say we have a set of functions. I'm just going to write down arbitrary functions for now like f1 of x, f2 2 of x, and let's say we have n functions, so we go all the way up to fn of x. Our goal in this video is to learn if we have a set of functions, is the set linearly dependent or linearly independent? And in order to figure that out, we first need to do one quick test. We need to form what is called a linear combination which means we take all of our functions, we're just going to add them all together, f1 of x plus f2 of x plus all the way up to fn of x, and we multiply each individual function by its own constant. So we say c1 times f1 of x plus c2 times f2 of x plus c3 times f3 of x all the way up to plus cn times fn of x. This is called a linear combination. We essentially multiply all of our functions by its own particular constant, or as they may say, scalar, and we add up all the results. Now, to see if this set of functions is linearly independent or linearly dependent, we have to take our linear combination and set it equal to zero. Now here's the deal. If we can try and find the set of values for these constants, these c1, c2, cn's, etc., that make everything on this left-hand side of the equation cancel out, so that we actually do get zero equals zero and this equation holds, if we can do all that, then we say that this set of functions is linearly dependent linearly dependent. Now, if we search for values of these constants and we find that there's no values that make all these constants cancel out, then we say that the set of functions is linearly independent. So the goal is try and see if we can make this equation hold for particular values of these constants. And before we do some examples, I just want to bring up two very quick points, and two very important points, I should say. You may be thinking, okay, well, we just need to get this left side equal to zero, and these constants can take on any value. What if c1 is equal to zero, if c2 is equal to zero, if c3 is equal to zero, and all the way up to cn? What if they're all just equal to zero? then we just multiply all of our functions by zero, so we get that zero does equal zero. And yes, that is true, but we like to call that the trivial solution. Because it does make the equation hold, but it doesn't tell us anything like unique about the set of functions. So essentially, we try and exclude that case. So we want to try and find fun uh, values of these constants, but they can't all be zero. There has to be at least some non-zero constants that make them all cancel out. Now the other important point is this has to be hold for all values of x for our functions. We can't be like, okay, at this particular value of x, maybe x is equal to 3, then this function is equal to zero, in which case everything else is linearly dependent or independent. We can't really say that that ha happens. We have to say it holds for all values of x. Now, this may seem confusing, but it should hopefully like help if when we do some examples. So, let's do one out right now. Our set of functions we're going to say is x, negative 2x, negative 3x, and 4x. So we want to see if this set of functions is linearly independent or linearly dependent. So we have to make our linear combination first. So we multiply all of them by constants. Let's say c1 times x 
minus 2 times C2 times X, or minus 2 C2X, minus 3 C3X, and plus 4 C4X. And we need to set our linear combination equal to 0. So, essentially, we can factor out an X from all the terms, and we can get that X times C1 minus 2 C2 minus 3 C3 plus 4 C4 is equal to 0. And we said that it has to hold true for all values of X, so we need to find some values of these constants for which this right here is equal to 0. But that's fairly easy to do. I mean, we could, even the case when all of these constants are equal to 1, if C1 is equal to C2 is equal to C3, is equal to C4, if they're all equal to 1, if this is 1, if this is negative 2, this is negative 3, and this is 4, then this cancels out. In which case, we found a set of non-trivial, meaning they're all not zero, uh, constants that make this equation whole. Which means, because we found these constants that make this equation whole, this is linearly dependent linearly dependent. Now the way you can think of two linearly dependent functions, let's, we can think of that conceptually, is that if you have two functions that are linearly dependent, that means you can scale one of the functions to make it cancel with another function. Like if our two functions were just x and minus 2x, we can scale this one by negative 2 to make them cancel out. You can think of it in a way as almost like a redundant function. Because if we multiply them by any constant, we get that they can cancel out and... Yeah. Now, um, let's do an example of a... Well, let's do another example. In this example, our set of functions is x and x squared. So we need to try and see if this is linearly dependent or linearly independent. So let's make our linear combination c1 times x plus c2 times x squared, and we're going to set that equal to 0. Now we need to try and find constants that make these two terms cancel out. But if you think for a moment, you may think, oh, it doesn't, I don't think I can make these can uh, functions ca cancel out. Because it doesn't matter if I multiply this x by like 10 or a million or a thousand, it won't cancel out with x squared for all values of x. This is what we like to call linearly independent functions. Linearly independent. You can't scale it by multiplying it by a constant and get these two functions to cancel out for all values of x. Now let's try and drive this point home with another example. In uh, this example, our set of functions is going to be x squared, x cubed, e raised to the x, and e raised to the 2x. So we know what to do by now. Let's make our linear combination c1 times x squared plus c2 times x cubed plus c3 times e to the x plus c4 times e to the 2x, and all of that is equal to 0. Now let's try and see if we can make these cancel. Let's focus on these two terms right here, x squared and x cubed. We can apply the same logic we did in the last example to find that it doesn't matter what constants you use for these two, they won't cancel. You can't, these two functions are linearly independent. And you can use the same logic and apply that to these two functions. You can, uh, because e to the 2x, that's basically like e to the x squared. And we'll find that there's no constants that make these two cancel for all values of x. And likewise, if we compare like e to the x and x cubed, they're two entirely different functions. There's no way we can make them cancel out or for all values of x. 
So this set of functions is what we'll, is again linearly independent. Linearly independent. Now hopefully you're catching on by now, but let's just do one quick example, one last example. In this last example, we're going to do e to the x zero tangent of x and seven. These are a set of functions we need to see if they're linearly dependent or linearly independent. Now you may think off the bat like, well these are, look like they're entirely separate functions and maybe they won't be able to cancel in the same way they couldn't cancel here when they're entirely different functions. But you have to be a little bit careful because let's see what happens when we make our linear combination. If we have our linear combo C1 times E raised to the X plus C2 times 0 plus C3 times tangent of X plus C4 times 7. That's equal to 0. But here's the kicker. It doesn't matter what value C2 is. Because we're multiplying it by 0, this term is going to be t 0 regardless of the value of C2. Which means C2 could be a million in C1, C3, and C4 can be equal, sorry, can, they could all be equal to zero. And because they're not all equal to zero, that means it's linearly dependent, which means C1 can equal C3, C4, they can all be equal to zero, and C2 can be anything. And because they're all not, uh, because they're all non-zero, or at least because there's at least one non-zero term, that means this entire set of functions is linearly dependent. So a moral of the story, like if you add zero to your set of functions, it automatically makes it linearly dependent. Now, hopefully you should be catching on by now, but you may be thinking, this is neat, but how exactly does linearly, uh, linear dependence or independence relate to differential equations? Now, it's actually fairly important because we're going to find that if, in general, if you have an nth order linear differential equation, it's going to have n solutions. And those solutions just can't be anything. They have to be n linearly independent solutions. And we'll see that in the coming videos. But so hopefully this all made sense and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video.